Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. Oh, it is a terrific Tuesday. It is so terrific because God has been gracious and awesome to us all. He blessed us to see a wonderful weekend in which he gave us the great mixture of sunshine and rain, which helps all of us to grow. I'm so happy that God smiles upon us all and God gives us just what we need to help all of our vegetation grow and to make sure that we have all the food that we need and to replenish some of those streams that have seemingly been running dry uh, due to the great heat. But we know as the world gets hotter around us because of our lack of stewardship, God will give us better stewardship that we can make sure that we take care of this creation that he's given to us. Let's take care of our spirits today by looking at Revelation, the third chapter, verses seven through 13, the New Living Translation. This is a message that comes to us through and by John the Revelator, who finds himself on the Isle of Patmos. Remember, he was banished for preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even though they excommunicated him from people, God was so gracious and so good to him that he still gave him great revelation knowledge. Now, the message that we have to us on for us on today comes to us through and by the spirit of God. Wherever God's spirit is, you will always find out there's a great word for us all. So today the message comes to a letter that is written to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Now remember the word angel means messenger. And we know that the messenger that who he is writ- that who he is writing to in the book of Revelation is the pastor, is the preacher, is the minister there at the church in Philadelphia. This message comes to him. This is a message from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, from God the Father and from God the Spirit, the Holy Trinity. The message comes from the one who has the key of David, who opens what no one can close and who closes what no one can open. I'm so happy that Jesus Christ, that God Almighty and the Spirit have the keys. Remember when Jesus went to Calvary's cross, he died. Not only did he die, but the Bible says that he descended to hell to the lower parts of the earth and he took the keys of death, hell and the grave from Satan which stripped him of all of his little bit of power that he had. And he also took away the sting from death. And I am so happy that Jesus has the key. The message lets us see on today that it comes to us through and by God's spirit. As John the Revelator is writing to the messenger, the one who is the preacher for the church of Philadelphia. You know, Philadelphia is one of those churches that are in Asia Minor. And the message comes to him to let him know that God has the key. And nobody can open what he closes and nobody can close what he's open. Oh, that's a good practical point for all of us to understand. I am so happy. Somebody wrote a song many years ago that said, God will open doors for you. Whenever God opens a door, nobody can close it. And when God closes a door, no one can open that door. It reminds us how God is letting his church know that I want you to know that I am still in control of it all. He lets us see that he wants all of us to know that when he opens the door, no one can close it. And that whatever strength they think that they have, that they can deny him, that they can override God, you got another thing coming. He lets us also see that he wants to remind those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those who are the liars, those who are pretending to be what they are not. He lets us see, helps us to understand that he will put them in their place and they will exactly know who God is and who they are not. This word comes to us because he tells us those who have obeyed and have followed his commandments, he will protect them from the great time of testing that will come to the whole world, that will test those who belong to God and those who don't. He lets us see that Jesus says, I'm coming soon and I will have for you a crown. You know, the Bible tells us those who receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we shall receive the crown of salvation and we shall receive the crown of righteousness as we lived our godly lives. It lets us see that God is in control and God reminds us that he will give us the reward that we are due. This message comes to all of us to remind us that God is always in charge 
And if God opens a door, nobody can close it. If he closes it, nobody can open because he is in charge of it all. This message came to the Church of Philadelphia, but it's a message for all of us today to remind us that Jesus is Lord and that he is in control. And I want to remind you that God has a crown of salvation. He has a crown of righteousness for all of us who call upon his name. And always know in this year of 2022, God has a blessing in store for you because you are exceedingly and abundantly blessed. And I'll talk to you again on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.